Hi everyone, welcome to an Eximius Executive uh, podcast. The whole point of these podcasts are to bring people together, answer some questions on the current, uh, the current now, and give some guidance on how to navigate some of these interesting times. Um, I have two experts with me in Tom Pickering and David Barclay, and we're going to be exploring another um, another question from our community, which is how are we looking after people now um a pretty a, a pretty interesting a pretty basic question but actually when you challenge people on it you get some pretty interesting answers uh, so david how are we looking after people right now what's what are you experiencing um we're seeing a rate it's a big spectrum at the moment so lots of people are going well i'm just doing what i would normally do i pay them a salary and you know i check in on them we have weekly team meetings and things like that you know what's the problem with that well, the problem with that is we've gone through a global pandemic and people aren't working the same way. They're going through a whole load of stress and the mental health challenges that we're seeing with people. Um, and Zoom meetings don't necessarily cut it in terms of just meeting up with, you know, checking in on people and seeing how people are doing. And um, this isn't going away. This is going to change uh, how we work uh, and work patterns and flexibility of work and going back into the office part time, full time, none of the time globally sitting on a beach with a laptop in Mexico or you know going back into the office in um, in Shoreditch and, and it's going to be different for everybody and I think some of the things um, that I've been working through with with, with um, clients is probably the biggest one is transparency sort of a few clients who this is shifting the way they're working this has changed some of their business models it's changed some of how they're working and some people in the team won't fit into the new model um, or some people's roles will change uh, and I'm just saying to people, just be open and honest um, around some of the changes that they're going through and be open and honest with people and the expectations on them uh, and what's expected of them now um, in this sort of in this new way of working, just so that everybody's clear. Because I think if you leave amb uh, ambiguity, um, you're going to have problems. Uh, and there's a, yeah, but, you know, people are kind of work it out as they go. They won't. Um, it'll be the expectation set from the top. Uh, and that's going to be clearly communicated through the the business that'd be my number one top tip is just transparency just be really clear um and don't assume anything perfect perfect uh, and tom how about yourself uh completely opposite sort of uh, perspective on this nick this will change um i think i was when you asked the question i think it, it it struck me actually what's my role when i'm what's my modus operandi when i'm working with teams it's actually pretty provocative um, and i'm always looking to open up options to encourage a certain amount of discomfort, uh, but a positive discomfort. And um, I think that what's happened is there's actually been an entrenchment, Nick, that's taken place, which has actually um, resulted in um, pretty big misalignments. Uh, and so I'm looking to open up those opportunities. So I had a discussion with a senior exec this morning talking about um, developing the team and actually the strategy and you know what's the best role in terms of type of support, which actually is around the capability development, uh, you know, staying ahead of the capability development, so in terms of finding the right people, considering their replacement and or um, development plans, not just for the individuals, but the organization itself. I've also had some uh, pretty provocative discussions around some of my pet subjects um, to test my own skills around um, artificial intelligence uh, and Bitcoin, Nick, <laughs> just for a change. Um, because, you know, I'm really interested in you know, maintaining and having discussions in adverse circumstances. And I've had a, quite a few discussions with some pretty woke um, uh, or people that use deploy woke skill sets, which is this thing around the gender displacement and you know, engagement and all that stuff. And so I think whilst I violently agree with the outcome, I violently disagree on the, the approach. Um, and so I've had some discussions around that, which is a very interesting um, bridge between the sort of woke mindset which is all around labeling we talked about labeling and um, stuff Nick uh, and generalizations versus the winning thinking type of approach which is the sort of becoming aware of those things and how can you open up those options so um, and I think the other thing in terms of relationships I, I also considered when I asked this question with my family so I've you know I've I actually uh, used silence you know, to give them the opportunity to grow so I spend quite a lot of time with my family members actually saying nothing, just being there um, and, you know, just sort of letting them be themselves. 
which is a completely different type of approach. So I think, um, yeah, I've, I've also done a bit of sur a few surveys to uh, highlight, you know, what, what are people thinking, what are people concerned about? And interestingly enough, while wokeness seems like a, um, uh, you know, a, quite a popular approach, actually there's real violent disagreement with it. Um, and there's a really big pushback and people are more concerned about it than uh, the threat of China, for example, so it's actually quite a big issue that no one's talking about. You know, within all of that, probably my biggest concern, Nick, is the inability to for organisations to have difficult discussions, um, and um, you know, developing my skills in that space as well. You know, in terms of actually being able to unravel situations, find common ground, and navigate through it, rather than just, not, but also be yourself acknowledging people for who they are and they can really take an interest in who they are so that's that, that's some of the approaches i've been adopting pretty regularly on a sort of daily basis nick with various types of engagements i'm involved with yeah and I, th I think we should we should do an episode on discomfort and maybe some exercises how we can get get used to it you know it's very sadly in life it comes our way and you need some kind of prepping before encountering it it can be horrendous um but actively like what you were talking about with sort of stirring the hornet's nest with the bit bitcoin community which is yeah. not hard to do <laughs> um but it's good to sort of come under fire every now and then sort of uh, uh, and feel you know feel levels of discomfort yeah but most of us it just creeps up on out the blue when we most don't want it and it's horrendous to deal with so i think going through yeah. some Basic discomfort training might might be interesting for a future episode. Uh, David, I get David and Tom. I I, I get the impression that um, not much change is really going on. Sort of, there was a, a big push at the start, and then maybe everyone sort of found a groove and stuck to that groove for the last six nine months. Is that is that is that what you're sort of getting the vibe on, David? Yeah, absolutely. I think. Um quite often the human brain is not great with change uh, we don't particularly like it we don't particularly uh, we don't often embrace it um, unless we have to um, and I think during this pandemic there's been a lot of change that's been forced upon people um, and we sort of adapted our behavior to do it and not many people um, are really practically looking at what does this look like the other side they're almost sort of what's the next um, evolution of what they're doing so do we get a smaller office that people can come and dip in and out of uh, as opposed to having an open office but everyone's in full time again um and they're looking at it from sort of from where they are now going forward as opposed to what's the end outcome we're trying to achieve and what's the most functional way to get there what's going to be best for the individuals what's going to be best for the organization if you uh, some companies have taken sort of polls across people and said you know who wants to do what in terms of work patterns some people have said be there full time. Some people have said be there flexible. Some people have said not at all. The problem is what you do is you set everybody's expectations then right. And everybody's coming to it from a great, well, I've been asked what I think and therefore I'm going to be given what I think. Um, and you know, if you're trying to sort of bow to everybody's will, then there are going to be people that are going to be, there are going to be frustrations on all sides because some people are never going to be in the office. Some people are going to be always there resentful. You know, it's just going to create lots of problems. And I think that's where, um, Leaders need to be leaders. They need to be forward thinking and thinking what is the function, you know, what are we trying to achieve and how are we going to try and achieve it and what's the best way to achieve that um, with everybody and how do you take people on that journey with you. If you are a leader right now and you're, you're, you're looking at your own performance and maybe you've acknowledged the fact you haven't changed anything, maybe you're not being as proactive as you should be, what's some advice we could give someone for sort of reconnecting with their team um, right now, or, or at least seeing it through the eyes of some of their team members. Yeah, it's. Um, I think wisdom comes from multiple pers perspectives, um, and so I don't. Th I think it's. You say it's, it's really about listening to people, um, and the problem is most people listen uh, to validate an opinion. So often, if you say to everybody in your team, "What what could we do to make your your working life better?" You're going to get a whole load of answers. A lot, of, most of which I would dare say aren't going to be actually in line with what you're trying to do. So if you say to everybody, "What you know, what can we do at work to make your life better?" Well, you know, perhaps we finish work at two o'clock on a Friday. Maybe we have, you know, Wednesday nights in the pub. I think that would be really good for some team bonding time. 
Um, actually, it'd be quite good if I could start work at 10. That would be slightly better for my training. You get all these answers. And most likely, you're either going to say yes to everybody, which is going to lead to organised chaos without much organisation, or you're going to have a low load of disappointed people because you've validated the opinion. And I think the key thing is to really frame questions and listen to people um, to an outcome of what you're trying to achieve. So try to avoid sort of very open-ended questions like, what, is the, you know, what are the things that we could do to make your, your life better? There's no wrong answer to that. Um, and so I think you just be really clear on what you're asking and what's the outcome of, of asking it. Um, and I think also one of the things that leaders don't do enough of is actually just having time on, you know, with feet on the table, just really thinking about the sort of future, take half an hour and go, right, what are we trying to achieve between now and the end of the year? Um, and organise a, um, my last point on this would be, organise a really good kind of team retreat away. Uh, one of my clients did that recently. They went away for two days, got an Airbnb, everybody could they had various um, activities and fun things to do during that but also they um they just really had time to talk about some of the challenges that they've been facing as a team that they haven't actually had time to really talk about as a team uh, i think zoom is great and google meets and all those kind of things are brilliant but there's nothing that kind of really replaces getting people together and looking at problems and having time to do it away from the business and away from the normal environment um, and for at least one of my clients that have done that recently, it's probably the difference of them being there in 12 months time and not in terms of bringing to light some of the challenges they're facing and actually having focused time to really uh, to really meet those challenges and strategize around what they're going to do differently to still be in business in 12 months time. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and Tom, what would you add to that? Um, <clears throat> There's two sides of that, Nick. I think there's one on the business side, the sort of normal shopping list. Well, it's actually not normal shopping list things to do, but I'm going to park that completely. I think the um, the main thing is what's being unsaid, Nick. Right. So I talked about um, stirring things up. I'm effectively um, opening up and giving people the courage to talk about things that are being unsaid. Uh, there's a skill set um, to do that because it's the last thing. Um, that most people will do because when people are fearful the last thing the last thing you do is sort of listen to people and take a different view it's almost the last thing on the list so I think there's um, and, and the default position there is more around the generalization and labels so if you listen to the dialogue it's very much more around those sorts of things and to, to break that habit I think you really do need to take a different perspective um, and I I think the sort of perspective is actually taking active interest in acknowledging people for who they are and actually um, val really valuing uh, you know, different, different opinions and really taking interest to understand it. And I think that's quite a difficult thing to do um, and it requires a lot of practice. Um, and I think the outcome really is sort of threefold. One is staying on target, which is actually an EQ related thing. Um, it's not an IQ related thing. The second thing is the way of working, implementing, and implementing it in a, things in a way that what David just said about the perception of people doing what they're said or not fitting into the strategy, as the case may be. Um, I think it's about actually letting people do things in their own way um, and having the courage to do that. And then thirdly, um, having open dialogue. And from that, you, you, you naturally, by encouraging people to allow, things, allow them to do things in their own way, listening to what they're saying, you then naturally steer the ship in the right direction. I think um, that said, that is so much easier said than done because um, it comes back full circle, Nick, to what's actually being unsaid. Why am I being provocative? It's not because it's, you know, this is about what you know, looking after people, right? So I, that looking after people is really, to, you know, really doing with a with a real love for them, you know, shining a light into a into a blind spot and identifying the language depersonalize it so it's not confrontational given the skills to actually be able to talk about these things that no one's talking about yeah i, I definitely think so and I, I think leaders should be conscious of the fact that there's been some compounding going on over the last nine months where if you've flourished and you've loved the lockdown then you're not going to want to change this works for you remote working is great if you haven't loved it uh, this hasn't got any better. Like, it might get better on the day the sun shines, and you maybe actually go for that walk you forgot to take for the last sort of six months, right? But I think leaders right now need to just 
remember to check in and ask some really basic human questions about how are you? How are you actually really doing? How's the family finding all this? If you are going to go into remote settings for longer, like what can the business do to ensure that you're helping, you know, someone back maybe, right? Someone's lighting, you know, if, if, if someone is nine months into having the worst broadband connection, maybe see if we can help them out, <laughs> right? Don't get annoyed at them and they cut out, like, you know, give them the extra five or a month to help them get there, to get that working environment set up. Um, you mentioned Zoom. I know plenty of people who have not gotten Zoom at all in the last uh, nine months, you know, still managed to do everything over the phone. And it's impressive, but also that is so cut off from the rest of the world. And I think checking those people are okay. Like, you know, personally without Zoom in my life, I would have gone stir crazy, you know, not be able to see your pretty faces guys would have, uh, would have driven me off the edge, you know, that, that weekly release of seeing you. So, and I, I think just as leaders that, you know, we are, as leaders where it's got easier is the fact in a way, and what is quite dangerous is that people are getting results during this period of time. So if you look at it from just a binary, are we hitting X numbers doing delivering Y product? The answer to the business is yes. Are we actually engaging uh, productively with people? A lot of the answer is people don't know. It's not yes or no. They just can't tell you if they can because they've got in, not a rut, you know, they've just got into a, a a mode where it's, it's, it's definitely compounding, right? Um, and I think coming back to David's point of transpa transparency, um, if you are that business that all of, all of a sudden is gonna say you have to all return to the office and you can't correctly articulate that, um, I think you're gonna be in, in, in big, big, big trouble, you know? Or you need to look at yourself, if you're a business full of middle managers who need to justify their existence, to manage people, um, the only way to do that is to have them physically next to them. You, you need to figure out what's, how that can't happen still, even in a remote sort of setting. You know, it's been a big challenge for people, but I'd say from a very human aspect, just how are you? Like really mean it, really make sure you're understanding how people really are, what's, what's affecting them. We can all set up a little Zoom call, the nice corner of the nice part of our house to look all rosy, um, but that's not real life at all you know if i turn the camera here you'll see the unmade bed <laughs> clothes everywhere absolute chaos uh this corner is all fine so and i think that's a good uh analogy for like a lot of people's lives right now and i think we need to be really really conscious of it um uh, D david for both of you are world class in actually getting people to talk and open up and actually uh, be honest about those sort of scenarios. One last sort of passing comment for leaders on ways they can sort of encourage that or leaders who are maybe almost scared to mix it up because things have been going well at work, right? And they, you know, it's not broken, so don't fix it. But I just feel that approach right now is gonna to lead to some big issues down the line. So David, what's your thoughts? Um, <clears throat> I think be as objective as you can. Um, and not as subjective because just because something's working for you doesn't mean it's working for everybody else as you exactly just said um, and you know it, it's having coming up with things with you know objective data around it or objective reasons as to why this is the best path forward as opposed to what well, is working for me it seems to be working for the company so we'll just crack on um, I think everything needs to be re-evaluated because the world is changing all the time you know, each every few weeks, there's you know guidelines are changing as to what we can and can't do. We can go out and see more people. We can have people into our own home, which we haven't done for goodness only, only knows how many months. You know, all those things are changing, and to think what well, is working now does not mean it's going to work next month. And so, I think being as objective as you can and not subjective of what works for me, therefore it should work for everybody else. Um, I think is really important, uh, and it's also fair for people. And people uh, have a natural disdain for things that aren't fair. Uh, or, or they, you know, they don't think is right. And so I think just trying to make it as um, reasonable as fair for people and communicating, I think, is, is a really big thing. Um, and that comes, as you said earlier, just from actually connecting with people properly and not having superficial conversations. Yeah, yeah, no, it's spot, spot on. Uh, and, and Tom, sort of the clo closing comments. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, Nick, there's been a seismic shift taking place. So I think the first thing to do is to ask yourself the question, 
do you recognize it? Okay, what are the aspects of that seismic shift? And I, I've pulled together these seven things in my from quite extensive research, actually. Uh, and I've put those things into practice. So the second thing is, I think it starts with us, Nick. It's not everybody else, it's us. So I'm, when I think back, actually, what I've done, uh, I've started about six different businesses this last 12 months, Nick, you know, following this stuff through. But, and I, and I think, but you now also, I've, I'm also conscious of people who've gone back to work, so to speak, and thrown everything away in terms of their exercise routine, some of the really important positive aspects that they've learned. So I think it's a question of taking stock of actually what have you done? And if you've gone back to work, let's say in inverted commas, um, are you throwing all that down, down, the, um, down the loo? I think the other one is um, if you haven't taken any new action, uh, I'd encourage you to, to ask us for help in all seriousness because, um, and, I would, and don't trust the data, right? Uh, this is not a data problem. There's so much data. Uh, on this it's actually trust how you feel um, so I really would you know people you know how you feel uh, it's, it may not be good but if you if you really do find you haven't done anything di different in the last 12 months I really would encourage those people to speak to us because we do know how to open up the options in our own way with a huge amount of love and respect um, and a totally selfless approach so that's that's what I would, would close on me well, I think that's great and I, I... I think I'd, I'd echo that there's um I love that idea of do you recognize the shift right just as a just to an individual asking yourself you know how much do you know about this how much can you actually relate to others through this I think is a great place to start and and and, and like Tom said like these are these are tough topics um that get explored and it's the reason we have professionals like Tom and David in the world to help get through them so please reach out if you want to uh, delve a little deeper um, get some advice or coaching of how to navigate these kinds of uh, big change that's coming which you know all change is big in my eyes like small changes still need a massive strategy around to actually implement and execute correctly um, uh, sometimes bigger change is actually easier um, than the uh, making the micro adjustments so but um, reach out to us always happy to help uh, looking forward to a, a flurry of topics coming in for future podcasts. I think we'll definitely look at working in a sort of discomfort and how to sort of have coping mechanisms around that, um, the seismic shift, and also just getting people to look back at, you know, the amount of people who told me if I, if I didn't do an hour's commute a day, back and forth, I'd go to the gym every day, like that person has not gone to the gym every day, <laughs> right? Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's interesting what really drives us, drives us and has changed us through this period of time. But um, as always, everyone at home, thank you so much for uh, your support. Keep those questions coming in, keep challenging us and do not be afraid to reach out if you need any help or guidance in these times. We are, we are here for you guys. Um, otherwise, all the best and we will catch up soon. Goodbye. <laughs>